One of the key factors to success in learning a language is having a well-working systematic in doing so. There are a lot of guides floating around the net teaching you Japanese, but only a few teach you how to teach it to yourself. I'm quite sure that many want to learn Japanese, but don't know how to start. Or they start but give up quickly because they are intimidated by the overwhelming amount of work required. If you don't know what you are doing, chances are that your progress will be painfully slow. You can invest double the time and still get half the results when using inefficient methods. I was lucky enough to figure out a decent strategy right away, so I'll give you a complete rundown on how I went on this journey. And because I am enjoying untranslated content for years now, I am also the living proof that my way of doing it worked out pretty well. One important point I have to mention right now is that my study always focused on the passive language ability, that is reading and hearing. I never had much interest in actually speaking with people in real life because I'm a loner, but if you are interested in humans, you should expand my curriculum by whatever you deem necessary. Still, I was pleasantly surprised to see that I was able to hold a decent conversation with Japanese natives even without ever practicing speaking. Oh, and before you even think of starting, I'll tell you that you need time. We're talking about one to two thousand hours of pure study. And you need willpower. An inhuman amount of willpower. So my first week I've read up the essential at imabi.net. From basic pronunciation over the writing systems hiragana, katakana, some general knowledge about kanji, to every grammar you will ever need. This wonderful site will accompany you from your first steps till full proficiency. Also noteworthy is Tai Kim's grammar guide, which can be used as an addition. Grammar can be learned at whatever pace you like. Actual usage of your knowledge will come much later anyway. Half of it will come through passive absorption and a general feel for the language. No need to dive too deep into it right now. After getting the basics, I quickly figured that kanji will be a first major part of my study. To get a general feeling for them, I simply wrote the 2100 everyday kanji into a notebook. Don't avoid kanji. Avoid Japanese written in Latin letters. It's cancer. You'll figure out that kanji aren't just wild accumulations of random strokes, but that they have a stroke order, consist of smaller components called radicals, and that you can use them to create memory aids to make sense out of those countless symbols. This became quite famous as the Heisig method, which is interesting to look into, but entirely optional. Learning the general meanings of the kanji is the next step in our journey. Most words will tell you the meaning of a kanji by themselves. But when encountering unknown compound words, recognizing a kanji and knowing its general meaning is way better for learning than seeing the strokes and just having a diffuse feeling of having seen it somewhere. To learn the kanji meanings and vocabulary, I got some technical help. Our next best friend on our journey is called SRS, Space Repetition System. Before the rise of technological tools, people wrote down vocabulary on two-sided paper cards and organized them manually for review. Space repetition systems make things a lot more convenient and efficient. Each item still functions as a question-answer flashcard, but the system schedules your reviews for you. When you get a right answer, the interval till the next review increases, sorting out items that don't need repetition. When you get a wrong answer, the interval decreases, giving problematic items the necessary attention. As long as you keep up your daily reviews, a space repetition system will ensure progress. There are two systems I used. The first one is Memorize.com. It's a system I recommend for beginners because you don't need to configure anything and there are a lot of ready-to-use courses waiting for you. I later switched to Anki, a system which is better for individual configuration and it has some neat add-ons which are required for a later step. Links to the Memorize courses I used back then can be found in the description of this video. Our first course is Kanji to Meaning, sorted by the JLPT levels. The JLPT is short for the official Japanese language proficiency test consisting of five levels. The JLPT gives you a good overview over how much grammar, vocabulary and kanji you need to know at a certain level. If you plan on working in Japan, it's a good idea to actually take those tests. Anyway, in this memorized course, you'll get a kanji shown and you'll have to type in the meaning of it. Don't invest too much time here though, because you still don't know a single word in actual Japanese. That's why we also start to dive into real vocabulary with the JLPT N5 course, which will teach you your first few hundred vocabs. Additionally, I also wrote every word with reading and meaning into a notebook to practice kanji writing. It's by no means necessary for memorization, but seeing how you accumulate hundreds of words gives a pleasant sense of accomplishment. Vocabulary will be 90% of your study. On a side note, you sometimes hear that 1000 kanji or 3000 words are enough to understand basic Japanese. That's nonsense. All everyday kanji or 6000 words are needed in order to start serious reading. 
Only after 10,000 words I became somewhat comfortable with my skills. At 13,000, three years after starting, I finally considered my vocabulary study as done. Though you never get to a point where you don't need to look up things. Even Japanese need to look up obscure kanji. Place names and people names will be out of question as long as you don't actually live in Japan. Very important to note is that you shouldn't waste time learning kanji reading separated from words, because kanji usually have several readings and you can't know which reading has to be used unless you look up the word. Always learn kanji through real words like this is read as daigaku, meaning university, written with the symbols for big and learn. Learning the readings of difficult kanji like this would lead to nothing other than headache. Now some additional resources. Classic.jisho.org or jisho.org will be your go-to online dictionary. Hikai Champ is a reading aid for Firefox, providing you with the dictionary entry of a word when hovering over it. Use anime to improve your listening comprehension. Some say anime teaches you bad Japanese. I say that if you aren't able to distinguish between slang and proper Japanese, you are lacking something very important anyway. Check out the YouTube channel Nihongo no Mori. They have countless videos for every level of proficiency, going through grammar, vocabulary and kanji in detail. Months 2 to 6 were all about raw vocabulary learning. I've gone through JLPT N5, 4 and 3, learning around 3000 words. You can try out your skills on content aimed at beginners like NHK, Newsweb, Easy, but don't expect too much. Most likely you still don't understand most of it, and maybe this will motivate you to go on, but it can also strain your willpower. This phase is where people are likely to stop. You are over your initial enthusiasm, and your goal is still a far away dream. It seems unlikely to reach, given that you invested so much time and effort, and still feel like a total beginner. Hopefully reviewing vocabulary for at least one hour a day, preferably two, has become a habit as of right now. Stop reviewing and you have lost. But rejoice! Things will become a lot more interesting after your first half year. Our third best friend after imabi.net and the space repetition system of your choice are visual novels. Yep, that's right, that's how I jumped into the real stuff. I found visual novels to be the most efficient tool for learning. Just don't bother with the majority of what is published on Steam, it's mostly crap. Go for the widely unknown, untranslated, usually adult-oriented good stuff. With pictures and voicing, they give you helpful context for your understanding. Just don't expect too much from your first visual novel. When done, you'll most likely still have no clue what the hell you were trying to read, but you have to start somewhere. When reading your second visual novel, I guarantee that you notice an enormous improvement in your abilities. I post some recommendation in the video description. This is also the time when you want to switch from Memrise to Anki. I'll show you how to copy unknown words straight from the visual novel, look them up the fast way and add them to your Anki deck. With the right setup, this step will take only a few seconds and it is the core element of my way of learning Japanese. Anki requires a bit of fiddling to get started. I use Anki solely for the vocabulary lists I create on my own. I set up Anki in a way that I get a word presented in kanji, I then have to type in the reading in kana and get the meaning upon checking the answer. To configure it that way, you need a deck with at least one item, go into review mode, click on edit in the bottom left, go to the fields settings and create three fields with the names front, back and translation. Go then to the card settings and paste the card templates I leave in the video description. You can of course set up Anki in a way so that it works like old school two-sided cards with no input required, but typing in the reading worked out better for me than just looking at a screen for hours. Visual novels usually don't allow to copy text straight from them. With a tool called Interactive Text Hooker, the currently displayed text of a visual novel will be automatically exported into the hooker and copied into your cage, allowing you to paste it with one click into a dictionary. To hook up a visual novel, you have to click on Process in the upper left. The visual novel has to run already to be listed. Search for the corresponding exe, select it and then click on Attach and OK. To see the exported text, a new line has to be created within the visual novel. Choose one of the rows from the drop-down menu that currently should say something like console output and you'll see your copyable text. To add vocabulary from a visual novel into your Anki deck, you need an Anki dictionary add-on called Yomi-chan. Thanks to the hooker exporting every line into your cage, you can simply paste into Yomi-chan and look up a word by clicking on it with the middle mouse button. Clicking on the bigger green-white plus on the right side adds the item to your deck. To do so, you need to go to the Yomi-chan settings, select the deck items shall be added to 
and match the database entries, expression, reading and glossary to your fields front, back and translation as shown here. So the process looks like this. Read, discover an unknown word, alt tab to Yomichan, paste, look up the word and add it to your deck. When using mouse bindings, this process takes just 4 clicks and only a few seconds. To summarize it, start with the basics through imabi.net. Learn the kanji meanings and JLPT and 5, 2 and 3 vocabulary with memorize.com. After that, jump into real usage by getting new words from visual novels. I've learned JLPT and 2 parallel to a new vocabulary from visual novels in months 7 to 12. After that I had 6000 words and reached the stage where I started to get used to the language. But don't get false hopes. You are only halfway up at that point. You have to look up stuff in nearly every sentence and don't understand some of them anyway. But here's the thing, you just go on. After the second year I reached 10,000 words and was finally able to enjoy reading. Though still far from perfect. Another year was needed in order to reach the point where reading in Japanese became a second nature at around 13,000 words. I never wasted much time on grammar, just skimmed through imabi.net and Tai Kim's guide every now and then. I didn't learn the JLPT and one words from an abstract list because I wanted to get my new vocabulary from real usage. There are countless ways of learning a language, but since I had great success with my approach, I wanted to share it. And yes, that's basically it. Keep reading, keep adding to your deck and keep reviewing. You may have expected much more, so I'm pleased to inform you that the easy way can be one of the most efficient ones, as I have experienced firsthand. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section and I'll be glad to answer them. Thanks for watching, see you again!